So what is, is it there a feeling of anticipation, excitement about tomorrow and the possibilities that come with all that? Uh, yeah, I think a little bit of everything, but obviously uh, we know, you know, you need four wins in order to advance. So we've got to take this game very serious because we know they're going to come out play the hardest they probably ever played. So um, we did a great job today preparing, cleaning up some mistakes and stuff like that. Um, because, you know, obviously the last game um, was a little bit different from the other ones before because we won by a lot of points, but that doesn't mean, um, you know, they, they missed open looks. So we got to do our job um, in order to, like, win a game. So, you know, no, no time to relax. Right so now. it wasn't as perfect as it looked? Uh, I think we did a lot of great jobs and we forced misses, but there were also a lot of open looks that they had. And, you know, if they go in, you know, the game can com go completely different. So in order to prevent that, you know, you got to still do your job and come out there and, and, and work hard for your win. Most of you guys were here last year and know what, the, what happened there. How much do you draw on that or do you, re do you reference it at all? We didn't talk about it at all, but obviously I think everybody who was here remembers that. And uh, I think everybody who experienced that doesn't want this to happen again. So that's why we have to like do our job and take this very serious. You know, there's no time to relax, especially in the playoffs. Um, they are a very talented team, especially offensively. You know, we, we did a good job last game, but like I said, they missed a lot of open looks too. And you know, they were the number one offense in the NBA for a reason. So um, we have to keep playing the way we do. And then, you know, but we also don't want to dwell on the past. We have to think back to last year. What, what is different? What is different in the mentality? Um, I don't know, I think some point experience, um, but at the same time, you know, we had this happen like last year, this like left the market, everybody, you know, we just, we want to win and we know we can win, you know, so um, I think the mindset is just that we go in and want to finish this. We talk a lot about cleaning up defensive stuff. It seemed like offensively, your player movement, even as much as your ball movement, was better. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think we played with a higher pace. Um, we got the ball over the half court a lot quicker, and that helps us to to set up our fast break points and our offense. You know, a lot of times we had open looks before the defense was even set, and we have to continue doing that as, as soon as we get the rebound, which is like a big part of finishing plays, especially with Gobert and Whiteside in there. We have to run and, and keep the pace up. You, you guys were the slowest team in the league during the regular season. Damn. How much? <laughs> had like the like fewest it. possessions. You played the slowest. Um, how much of upping the tempo is on the ball handler and how much is it also on you guys getting up the court, making the quick outlet to the, to the guards? I think what really helped us, you know, when, when our other guards catch the rebound here and there too, like Dodo, he right. just pushes it and sees what's going on. Because a lot of times, you know, you, you can't always expect the same guy to push the pace. That's just right. impossible. So um, now that we have everybody crashing in and helping rebound because they are so good at rebounding, Gobert and Whiteside, as I said, um, you know, that gives other people a chance to catch the ball and just push it in. And if it's another guy every possession, you know, everybody else has to run with them. So. Do you think that 100%, yeah. I mean, he's unguardable in half court and open court, so I think he enjoys both pretty, pretty much, yeah. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Uh, I think from our side, we were better in executing our defensive plan. You know, we didn't give him as many um, free throws. We played with better pace on defense too, not just on offense. But whenever we had like, we, we read the situations good, so they didn't have like as many attacks to the basket um, as before, and not as many open looks. Obviously, they didn't make their shots, but. I think the biggest biggest thing that we did was clean up the big mistakes that we had and they, that lead to like, you know, open layups and foul trouble and stuff like that. Everybody ready? Everybody healthy? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's ready. Uh, everybody's healthy. Everybody came out of that uh, last game clean. So, uh, had a nice practice and now uh, we'll head to Utah. When you get to a closeout game like this, is, is the message any different for you coming from the coaching perspective? Nope, nope. Uh, for me, it's, you know, for our team is to continue. Uh, the, the only thing we did was uh, force a game six up, you know, to go back to their place and understand it's hard to win there. And, uh, and they're a very talented team and well coached and uh, we, we got to hopefully put ourselves in a position to find a way to win on the road. Yeah, I know you weren't here last year, but did you bring it up last year when the Mavs up 3 2? Is that part of the conversation? No, we haven't. Uh, I, I think uh, someone asked that question. We haven't talked about last year. Uh, we just are in the moment uh, talking about how we can get better uh, on both ends of the ball um, in this series, um, and that's the only thing we've really been focused on.
does it do for a young team to get over that hump of finally closing out a series for the first time? Yeah, it's it, it's not easy, uh, you know, uh, to to close out a series, um, and so you got to be playing your best basketball, and you got to continue to uh, trust and uh, and believe in one another. And uh, right now, that's what we're doing. This team's had a special ability this season to bounce back after losses and dealing with adversity. Uh, what about the character of this team has gotten them to that point where after coming off of a game four loss, they can have that kind of performance? Yeah, I, I think uh, we talked about it. Uh, I think before the game is the journey we've been on. We've been in different situations. Uh, we've won games. We've lost games. Uh, do, and can we, you know, learn from those? And um, I thought again, the character of this team is, you know, we we found a way to win up there in game three uh, and put ourselves in a position to win game four. But we didn't. We didn't get the W. Um, but we came back home, and uh, we still believe that. If we played the way we have been playing here of late, that it puts us in a position to win. But you're never guaranteed to win, and we saw that with the last 40 seconds in uh, in Game Four. So um, again, we got to execute and trust, and, uh, and and keep playing hard. What's the story or an example about how this team's been able to turn the page so well after losses, especially this last one? Is there a moment or a story that you think really illustrates how they're able to look at it? Uh, I don't know if there's a story. I, th I think it's just uh, they've been together. They've uh, they've seen the good and they've seen the bad. And uh, you know that pitcher mentality after you give up a home run is you got to throw the next pitch. And, and that's the way this team I think uh, goes about their businesses. Uh, they they all understood what the position that you know that we were in, um, and we just came up short. Um, there was nothing to you know linger in the sense of like talk about or debate what we could have done different. It's, you know, turn the page and, and get ready for game five, and I thought that's what they did. You guys going to be wearing black tomorrow? Black? Coaches, no. Guys, walking no. The arena, not bring that back from 11? No. No. Because it was in black and white TV, so everybody thought we were in black. <laughs> <laughs> I was there live in the first. <laughs> oh, so it, might, it was a little color. No, we're not. No one's wearing black. No black. They, they've run up a much higher Yeah, I, well, I think the big thing is rebounding the ball. Uh, Gobert had, you know, offensive uh, rebounds that we we fouled, and so um, again, we we, we got to try to keep him off the free throw line. We got to keep a body on Gobert uh, so he doesn't dominate the boards. How do you get Spencer more more involved in the offense? He only had nine points the last game. Spencer. Uh, make shots. I, I get him involved, and I, I don't know, understand what what he means. He only had like eight shot attempts, three out of eight. In the last game? Yeah. Uh, I think we would all sign up uh, if he only had eight attempts, and we um, and we have that type of win. So uh, it's not about Spencer the individual; it's about the team. So uh, he he'll, he's going to get the looks that he's been getting all series. We just he's going to make them, and hopefully in this next game. What has it been like to see the defense get to this point of being as dominant as you guys were last last game, especially since that's been a vision all year? Yeah, I think uh, we've talked defense from the start, and we continue to talk defense, and we rely on our defense, um, and that's pretty cool um, for the first year. And as we've gone, hopefully we continue to get better at uh, understanding the different schemes. But uh, I think the guys have really bought into playing defense, and. Our defense is going to be tested in game six. How much of that defensive performance the other night was kind of an illustration of what you've been preaching and teaching and kind of building all season? Well, it, it's uh, not just uh, in that, that game, but it's been all season. The trust uh, of understanding what we're talking about and teaching as coaches, uh, they're able to digest what we're saying. And, and uh, those guys are the ones that have to do the work, and those guys are doing it at a high level. Obviously, you don't want guys to get outside of themselves when it comes to a game. Like this, a potential game. In your experience as a player and as a coach, though, what's been the common thread for teams to be able to close out games in situations like this that you can communicate to your guys to get ready for this kind of situation? Yeah, that's the easy one. Just stay in character. Just be yourself. We're not asking anybody to do anything more. 
Uh, we're just trying to put ourselves in a position to, to find a way to win on the road, and that means just stay in character. Is there a killer instinct to that, though, to, hey, you can sense we're right there, we can let's close it out now? Yeah, uh, I've been around one of the greatest players when he wanted something really bad. He didn't shoot the ball very well in that first uh, half. Uh, and we're lucky to have Jason Terry uh, playing well. So uh, when you want something really bad, it tends to go the opposite way. So uh, again, as I just said, we just have to stay in character and, uh, and play our game. So if you had to pick one or two things that changed the defense that I think this team from last year to now, what would it be? I mean, that's tough. I think <clears throat> there's a whole lot of things that we focus on in, in training camp throughout the season um, and throughout this series um, in terms of preparing for games, in terms of how we communicate on the floor and our chemistry defensively. So it's hard to pick out one or two things, but I think it's just been a, a major focus for us um, as a team and on an individual basis to um, have each other's back and compete on that on the floor. Was there anything about <clears throat> that game the other night that really illustrated it well as you looked at the film again? Yeah, communication. Um, we followed the scout very well. Um, we understood their tendencies, and we, we had each other's back in the situations where we were beat or um, had to make rotations. So, um, and also we finished plays well, which was good. So, uh, but the biggest thing is having chemistry on that end of the floor and, and communicating. Obviously, shooting can come and go, but when you have a defensive game like that, how can that carry over? Can you repeat the question. What, you know, shooting can come and go. You can have a great shooting game. You know, one night and the next night it can go away. But uh, the defense, how can you know when you have a performance like you guys just had? How can that carry over? I mean, hopefully that's something that's consistent throughout. Um, <clears throat> I mean, that's that's effort and focus, um, following the game plan. Obviously, um, there are great players on that side, and, and they're going to make adjustments. So we have to be prepared for those things and um, try to do our best to to be imaginative and see what they may come at us with. But it comes down to just focusing on, on us and, and our scout and um, doing the same thing as far as effort and communication on that end of the ball. For those of you who were here last year, what did you learn about how, how to go about closing out a series and just kind of what it takes when you're up 3-2 to be able to hold that final You say from last year? Yeah, from last year having the 3-2 lead and not being able to close out. What, what did you all take from that, do you think, to make this time different? Um, right now we're focusing on this, this one game we have and competing to the highest possible level and um, that's every single possession so um, defensively it's going to be huge for us going into their place we're going to have to um, limit their possessions and um, make sure we're finishing plays and continue to communicate the way we've been communicating and have each other's back and that, that's our focus going into tomorrow. So is, it, is last year something that you reflect on? I mean, there's been a lot of experience we've gone through as a team this season that we've taken a lot from and we're learning from and um, a lot of experience even in this series. So, um, like I said, our biggest focus is going to be going in there with the defensive mindset and um, letting our offense kind of feed off of that tomorrow and being prepared for whatever it is that they have prepared for us. Jason Kidd talks about staying in character as a team. What does that mean to you personally? You, so what was the first thing you said? Sorry. Jason Kidd talks about staying in character as a team. What does that mean to you personally going I mean, it means just that, staying in, in character. We've, we've done a lot of things to, to get to this point. Um, in all of our roles, we've, we've tried our best to be consistent, and that's something we're going to continue to do. And um, the effort has always been there. It's going to continue to be there. Um, and knowing where to be, when to be there, and having each other's back is, is going to be key going into tomorrow. Maxi, Maxi mentioned the increased <coughs> tempo that you guys are trying to play with. How much of that is on the ball handlers, uh, and how much of that is on the rest of the team, whether it's you rebounding and outletting or, or just getting down the court? Um, that really comes down to the full team getting stops. Um, I think we have skilled enough and athletic enough guards to run off of makes, but it's a lot easier um, and there's a lot more momentum when you run off of a miss. So if we can limit them to one shot, um, and we can crack down on their bigs that have done a, a tremendous job of creating problems for us in that department. If we can hold them back um, and have a numbers advantage even when they're down on that lower side of the court, it's, uh, it's a lot easier to get out and run. You've put a lot of time in against Rudy. What did you think when Spencer went in and threw it down on him like that? It's a big play, a big momentum play. Um, he's a great shot blocker, so um, you got to pick your spots, and Spencer saw an opportunity, and um, he felt bouncy, so he took advantage. How uh, easy is it to just sort of lose yourself in the moment 
and just play the game as opposed to understanding what's ultimately at stake here? Um, I mean, just you know, just from the standpoint of you know, you're out there playing whatever game this is game six, okay? But but knowing that there's so much more that's there if you if you win this game to, to think about to to not think about the external and just deal with the internal. Yeah, that's not really we're not really playing with ifs. It's we have a game for sure tomorrow that we're gonna compete and we're gonna do everything in our power to win, um, and that's the focus. And it's going to start with one possession, and then there'll be one after that. So um, that's kind of the mentality that we're going in with, is competing every single possession, carrying out our, our game plan, just keeping our staying in character and doing the things that we've done to be successful and continue to make the adjustments where needed. Is it hard to do that, though, given you know, you've been here a long time, you've experienced a lot here, and that you're, you're this close to really achieving a pretty important goal? I mean, there's no other option. We have to play the game. Like, we have to show up and compete every single possession. So um, that's what we're going to do.